Hello folks and welcome back to Core Forum. Here we are in the depth of August and we have been busy. We've been doing some contract work. I'll include some screenshots of that. But yeah, the plan for today is going to be getting the grass in the ground. Because as you can see, we have been busy. Off camera, we've been plowing the fields and we've rock picked them. And oh boy, we've got a lot of rocks on that. So with that all taken care of, we've got the lime. We can sell the lime and get some money. But all we need to do is sell the grass. So as we head back to the farm, we're going to quickly include screenshots and going to show a new business that has been popped up around the local area that I think is going to be a huge benefit for us. So as we're picking up the other trader, you can see there's a huge grain facility there to our right and oh boy it is a lot more in depth than just a grain facility. It's a brand new local cooperative. That has been spawned up, so let's have a little look here, shall we? As we go into here, and yeah, that is a huge facility as we're getting stuck. Try sticking to the path here, set by I guess the cooperative or construction company. So, yeah, let's have a little look here, shall we? So, what's on pull here? Stop. Yeah, this is a brand new warehouse facility, a little local cooperative that's been, I'm guessing, heavily invested in because I think, like in total, all of this was like, I don't know, a million quid, so. So yeah, we've got a little grain facility here, so we can store grain here if we want to. But also, we have an option to store our pallets, so. If we go over here and have a little look through the door. Yeah, look at that. It's a huge rack and stuff. So we can put our pads in here. Can't see any forklifts or like sk skid steers or whatever in here. So I'm guessing it's only just been open. I'm just waiting on for some equipment coming in. But anyway, so yeah, we have access to this. But it's not for free. It's going to cost us. So let's shut the door a sec. But yeah, it's going to cost us, I think the figure was £10,000 a year to access it. And for a grain, we store it, and then a small percentage of our crop we sell, we store it here, goes to the local cooperative. And yes, you may think, oh, that's a bit greedy, but again, it supports all the farmers, it supports all the local farmers. So let's say if we have a bad year now, or something in the lines of we have a disaster with one of our silos or both our silos and can't store anything then that is an option for us to store grain there so yeah I'm not going to look down on that because that actually is quite a good idea so definitely going to be making use of that as we've clicked the bollards as you do yeah, let's head back to the farm because we've got a lot of planting to do. And I've got to get the grass in now. It's got to be in August because it stops growing after October. I'm still cut in November and all that good stuff, but the actual time to for it to grow is two months and it stops growing after November, so sorry October so we need to get the grass in so yeah I've got the plow over there we finish all that and uh, where did I leave our planters and that I'm guessing that's all either spread everywhere on the map or at the farm now that's our cultivator over there uh, ah it's all down here so we need to get that hooked up so I think we'll use Actually, what is a horsepower car? Because I may use the Massey we currently got on the lease, so. Yeah, okay. use that cedar, so. Let's hop into this Massey we've been leasing out. 
can. Yeah, it's absolutely filthy. It's already worked up four work hours on it, and I think our other Massey is going to be ready in September, so it's just one more week we've got this on lease for. And yeah, it's going to be worth it, rather than buying a new tractor. Seeing that, we've got a quarter of a mil, we can buy a new tractor if we want to. Yeah, I'm not too sure on that, but I'm not going to focus on that for now. Because we need to get all the harvesting done the next year and that, first of all. And get everything planted. Because at the moment we've got our flower going to be set in December, along with our bread and that. So, we've got money coming in. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about... Okay, you're right. The least massy. That wasn't because of a worker, that was because of me. So yeah, I'm thinking, let's just top up with fuel first of all, give it a quick wash. Watch how much fuel have we got? Uh, just over 4,000 litres, so not too bad. And yeah, we'll give it a quick wash, so yeah. Let's get us cleaned up, hooked up to the cedar. And then we'll start getting our grass field seeded. Okay, so right, we've got the cedar all hooked up and ready. But I've decided to go and let's turn traffic back on. Lease out a second cedar and I'll try something different. I'm using the Amazon Cyton 15001-C. This is a 15 meter cedar. And yeah, this costs us like 10 grand to lease, so it's going to be pretty expensive to lease. But I've been told, because we've paid such a high leasing price, compared to our usual few grand, we're not having to pay for the hourly work fee, so that's good. So yeah, let's divide and conquer. I'm going to get the workers to start doing down here, hopefully. And then we start doing the fields up here, so... As you see, we've also done some field extension. So yeah, we'll have a little look at that in a few moments. So we need to maneuver this out properly. Put our beacons on. Because it's a pretty tight exit to the shop. And there we go, we are out. Excuse me here. Thank you. But yeah, this is an oversized cedar. We've bought some seeds and a little bit of fertilizer. We've got fertilizer at the main farm, but we're having the same one like me. I thought, heck it, buy some fertilizer because some of our fields do need fertilizer. The grass, what well, will be the grass fields, not the shoot bee or field bean fields. So that's at least one part taken care of. But yeah, now it's just accessing the fields like. We can go for the home farm and that. It's that tight little left there we've got coming up by the green mill. Leading up to the home farm here is going to be difficult, so well, let's give it a go anyway. So I'm just hoping no cars come out because this is a huge cedar. I can't really see got any cars behind us. So in the king left. And yeah, we need to do a really wide turn. Okay, there was a car there. Ooh, that was close. There we go. Got it. Yeah, just sprays in the grass verges there. But yeah, it's possible. And I think with the lease as well, it's a good test for us because... Down the road, we may upgrade from our 12 meter cedar to. That could even maybe this. But yeah, I'll need to test the access to the fields we need to. I think, well, technically, we don't own the home farm. Yeah. We can have access to it. So, alright. We'll just do that. Ah, uh, yeah, where is the field? There we go, just over here. Oh, this bit may be tricky. 
comes go all left. And the last possible moment is crank it. There we go. Clear that. Are we going to clear the building? I'll show you, mate. Has I got, has I got rear of steering? Oh, I saw that steering just now. Oh, it's going to be my imagination, but. There we go. So, yeah, does the cedar work for us? It does. <coughs> Don't have to do awkward navigations. But, yeah, to catch up, folks, on what our plan is, because we're only going to redo a more wheat or whatever in the coming year. Well, actually, seeing that, we may do. Actually, I need to figure out this. We aren't going to do one of these crops, but which one and on what field? I'm thinking, actually, maybe what we can do is actually still plant everything because we can just do a spring wheat and spring barley. That would push the harvesting window into pretty much August or September of next year, but yeah, I think it's going to be worth it, because um, with all the grass we're going to get, we'll bait it, get silage, and if you cut it and bait it in October, that's going to be ready for December, or no, sorry, November actually. And the price is at its peak around, yeah, December to February. So as soon as it hits around the 570 mark, we'll sell. Because yeah, we've still got like 400,000 things at the farm we haven't used is covered, so... Hasn't turned into compost yet, but still. Yeah, I'm actually liking that. Of course, we've got all the rolling to do afterwards, that's going to take a fair chunk of time. But yeah, I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, I'm liking how this cedar works. So yes, putting down some fertilizer, of course, if we have a look at the fertilizer map, this should be fully fertilized to a degree, yeah. It's just the verges, the field extension area, and then all other fields do need fertilizer, but yeah, we can always do, do that, so I think what I'll do is, I'll do the headlands here, switch to the upper cedar, and then I'll just get the worker doing this. So yeah, best way to get all this done is a little time lapse. So yeah, let's get all the scene done, and I'll see you folks afterwards once we're done here.
there we go, we are in September now, we've managed to get everything done, all the seeding, the rolling done, and the fertilizer done. And yeah, that was a lot of work worked into the night, and you may have noticed, the money's gone down very significantly, but that's because at one point, we was on 370 grand, we sold all of the light after having to set to sell because it hit the 100,000 year limit and yeah a few other things actually one thing I do first of all is sell quickly this apple juice so let's have a look yeah so with all this we've sliced by another field which will show in a sec apple juice Market stall. Of course, that's up there. Always makes this mistake. Because you know what? We'll set the worker off. Okay, it needs a weight, so bear with me a sec. There we go. Got our 3.3 ton weight on. And yeah, we've got 14,500 litres of apple juice to sell. So yeah, that will net us. Close to 60 grand. We, there we go. Which is needed now. After buying a new field, we bought field 111, 111. And that's got soybeans. That's why I purchased it, because I thought soybeans is a good crop to do. And when we sell it in June, we'll get a very good price for it. So I thought, heck it, let's buy another field. Why not? But also, one thing we need to do is start shifting some of our pallets into storage just because since, yeah, since we have some issues with the game crashing, I've decided to disable the large capacity pallets mod. So I thought that was having like a mod conflict causing like a mod crash or something. Go. That's a bit. Yeah, six grand as I thought. So yeah, we was having game crashes, so I thought I'd disable that. <coughs> However, that would have meant and has meant pallets perfectly spawn, especially our wool and our eggs, will have been gone. So that needs to be rectified, and I've done that with, in a way. Purchasing those pallets back as your normal sized pallets, but in essence, we've already heard those pallets, so I compensate myself in a way. So, in a way, we haven't lost any money on how many pallets that we've in essence we lost because of the modern issue. But yeah, so it's not just those pallets, we've got strawberries, we're now spawning because I thought, yeah, just sell, sell those pallets when we get to around December or January time. That tends to be the best time when you start selling your vegetables now. Or your fruits and vegetables, shall I say. So yeah, full pick it, spawn those, and we'll just sell them when the time comes. So yeah, let's head to the store and pick up these pallets. And there we go, at the store. So yeah, there's our pallets. No, we haven't cheated these pallets. These are the pallets that we would have had if we just, you know, done them normally rather than having these large pallets. So, thankfully, thanks to another mod I've enabled, the Liftable Bales. Not, sorry, the Liftable Pallets mod. We're able to get these on with no issues whatsoever. Because, yeah, we had uh, actually almost two of like a single pallet spawn, but remember the large pallet capacity meant that the capacity was five times as more so in fairness we may have could have got another two wall pallets but yeah I don't be accused of cheating in that so yeah I thought heck it settle on these and then we'll just get these in storage for now and when it comes to time to either sell or I am so adamant on like furthering our production up the food chain and that in the way of 
get enough facility in, but also I'm thinking about the corn now. There's a cornfield. Fortunately, it's about double the money we've got at the moment. However, I think we could acquire a very small loan, you know, to do a bit of forage work, because corn is good, corn is valuable, and we can make popcorn out of that. However, I'm thinking, get some cider out of it, maybe? Actually, can we do corn with what we've got at the moment, or do we need the other production chain? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we need the other production, yep, so... Fair enough. We've almost got a bunch of tomato juice and salads. But yep, so then we get the rest of this loaded up. And then we'll take these to the store. And yeah, I'm gonna have a little look at that new palette cooperative. Just to see what it's all made of. And there we go, got it all loaded up. And yeah, that's the cornfield there. Yeah, I'm tempted to buy that field, get another little short-term loan. Because, yeah, with all what we're going to be doing, we've got our field beans, they're ready to harvest, got the production chains we want in. Combine that with everything else, including selling our apples at the moment. Yeah, we're going to make a lot of money come Christmas and that, this year or so. I mean, before then. But yeah, most of mine's going to come around June next year when we sell the field beans and now the soybeans. But if I had to guess, half a million, so you no know, short term, nine month loan, give or take. Doesn't seem to be the most out of ordinary. But yeah, I am absolutely loving this facility. Those gates open very quickly. Yep, there we go. So, let's have a little tour of this, shall we? And have a little look. So, we're not tour getting these all loaded in, so I think it's somewhere here. No location outside or inside. So, let's have a little look on inside. Thankfully, we've got liftable pallets, but for the other parts we have, things like the apples and apple juice. I shouldn't even sure they're accepted here, but... Alright, okay, one's already gone in. I didn't want that, I wanted it on the inside. Ah, it was at set outside, as now it's on the inside, so... See, I'm thinking, what's he got put in here? No. Um, here. Nope. Not here. Ah, maybe it's over here. Because in the screenshots there was like a little marked box here. Yeah, I'm not sure actually. So what I'm going to do is actually enable interactive markers. So we can actually see everything, so there we go. Interactive markers are on. Okay, that's the unload. Loading is apparently here. I guess in ah maybe where it unloads, perhaps. Turn on the lights. Doesn't seem to be changing anything. The location out. That's oh, inside now, so. So one egg pallets, where is that gonna be two? Outside now? Hmm. I wonder where is well, no, actually generally, where is that egg pallet two? Huh? Maybe it's in another part of the building, maybe? 
Is that where the bells did not go? Or bells are stored, but yeah, I cannot find where that egg pad is gone to. It's on this side? Ah, it's on this side, so fair enough, so actually bear with me a sec. So if that's like that. Now we set spawn outside. Or loading outside. Ah, right. Now that makes sense, so... Fair enough. So regardless, you, everything gets loaded here. So in a way, so you're back up with a semi. In a sense. Yeah, if we have a look here. And there we go. There's all of our wool. And our eggs. And yeah, this holds 450. 450... Uh, pallets, so that is a lot of pallets. So let's grab this. Sorry, little hiccup, there, So let's chuck you. There we go. Ah, yes, yeah, so there we go. It's all lined up now. 40 pallets. And I'm guessing that's pallets and bales up separately. Because yeah, we've got a huge rack in up here. Can't go underneath the shelves, unfortunately, but... But you can still inspect all your pallets, so... Now let's go and grab the strawberries. And any other pallets we can find that are full. So we can store them in here. transferred over but then also I thought I can't sit for a hand loan. I asked for a bit of a bigger loan from the bank and they have agreed initially our loan was at three hundred and ninety five thousand pounds asked for a loan extension of two hundred and five grand so we have a six hundred grand loan to pay off now rather than a four hundred grand loan but it was worth it because I've got some new facilities in Got rid of the old silo production facility and got some new ones to put in. But yeah, we'll have a proper talk about that. But yes, with this wall, 20,000 litres, which it sounds about right for what we had previously and for what we've accumulated since. Yeah, I'm actually quite excited here. I'm going to have lots and lots of clothes, hopefully. Especially so close to our main sheep area over here, where we get the majority of our bells. So, yeah, I'm just going to go out of here and cut in like this, just because of access. So, yeah, we've got two facilities in. We've got the farm production, and we've got the farm production, but there is a difference in the two. So, this one here can and has the option to do everything. But we've only bought this strictly for the purpose of clothes. Nothing else. We've got the bakery already. So this is just purely for clothes. Ignore the strawberries in. That was because of in the... What was it? In what? Two of the greenhouses still had it set to distribution. So ignore that. But yeah, so this is only going to be for our cotton not called for our fabric and clothes production so if we go down here and have a look so fabric wool and into clothes so let's go and put that in there we go that's 
last one. There we go. So yeah, 22,000 litres. Quick all save. And yeah, let's have a look at the recipes here. So scroll down. So yeah, we've got enough wool for a while. So we consume in 2,800 litres a month. Let's say 2,900 for the sake of arguments. Or 3,000 just to ra overly round it up. So yeah, we've got enough for best part of seven months of wool here. Now it's going to be used to make clothes. So your fabric, set that to distribution. So that will go to here. Because this other facility doesn't have clothes, right? No. So yeah, this one is similar to the one we had before to make in the mix had all that. But it does it at a greater cycle rate, I think. Actually, I'm not sure. Is that quicker or the same? Actually, I'm not sure on that. But yeah, with this, we can also make popcorn. So let's just have a look at the comparison. So go down here, look at popcorn. We're looking at 333 quid, so I think corn's going to be worth more just outright. Yeah, 2600 at its peak, so. Because, yeah, we're harvesting, well, we'll be harvesting it in September. And then we can sell it in December. And, yeah get some decent profit from that but I am thinking about silage because I'm thinking get silage in oh, yeah 570 quid per thousand litres around February but beans at least in a forge harvester so let's have a look at our options and yeah I'm gonna go with the Colossus I am keeping this very simple, not going over the top. Just part from a long pipe. Colour wise, yeah, I think him a, a, a black and blue, I think. Yeah, something like that. Something simple, something not over the top. have blue interior rims sure let's have black chrome black worn triangles sure orange lights no uh, not gonna go with all this fancy option just LEDs yeah LEDs white spotlights Go with super singles. I think that would be the best option for us because I don't think we're going to have much room whatsoever for maneuverability. Yeah, I'm just going to keep it simple. It's powerful enough, so yeah, that's 15 and a half grand. Also, going to need a forge header. Yeah, I'm not going to go with any like stupid. Well, it's not stupid, but ridiculous, unrealistic stuff. Purely keeping this simple. And compared to the other Forge Harvesters, it's just a cheaper version. Glad we didn't buy that, because we don't have the money for it. So yeah, with that, we're also going to need a trader. We can use our own. Or I'm thinking... Is there any other ones? Yeah, cause, yeah that's good. 70,000 litres, but it is so hev <coughs> heavy to pull and deal with. And also, there's maneuverability. Ah, that's got a side body, right? So that's 37,000 litres. Any decent compact ones, that's 52,000 litres, but quite big. Yeah, go with that. Possibly. 
Yep, we can use our own trees we've already got, but I think you know what? Let's go with this. So this app. Mudguard, Shore, UK Flag. Let's go with a similar dark blue. No, not that blue. I'm just trying to find... Yeah, if you know what the heck is, go and lease that. So yeah, that costs us 21 grand, but we're going to make our money back. Don't <coughs> worry about that. So, here we go. Go to the forest harvester. Actually, it was a bit of a lighter blue, but oh well. Also, we're going to need some slight additives, so... is absolutely huge on its own so I'm glad we've done with, with bigger wheels than that. There we go, we're able to hitch up fine. So yeah that pipe is perfect for us so I am happy with that. Ooh, we could buy some fabric if you want to. Ten grand. Actually is that worth it actually? <laughs> Yeah, let's have a little look at the prices, so... No, we're not going to sell the fabric and get a quick profit in that, but... If you want to, sure. Actually, you know what, heck it. Use that to make clothes. Sure, why not? So yeah, actually what we'll need is slide charity, that's why I went into the store function. So, it's going to be under big... Not big bags, pallets, I think. And there we go, slightly additive drum. Beacon. I think one would be fine, but okay, let's get two. So we need to fill this up. Actually, yeah, two was way too much, but I don't know what the consumption rate is going to be, so let's get this topped up. And at 60 litres, yeah, it was definitely not needed, but it was worth it. And yeah, just to test it as a probability for us, if we have the money down the road, who may knows, because this may be a viable option for us, so... But even then, I think, unlike with the harvester we've got, I may still release this, even regardless of anything else, so... Yeah, we've got 110 there, just have to double check if we actually bought field 110. But yeah, our sugar bit field's going to be ready in October. But our field being so harvested now, I don't think we'll harvest this today as well. I think I just want to get over there, set up and ready. So I think to round off the episode... Oops, oh, time's... Turn that back up. Eesh. Well, that's close. Do we cross into here? But yeah, run off the episode. I'm thinking. Yeah, that's the way to go in. Do some contracts, get our money back up. So I cannot see where I'm going. Thankfully, this has got some huge double gates. So I am blissed with that. back. There we go. Let's get this unfolded. I'll just do a little quick test pass. To, I'll fill it up or so because I just want to see. Okay, didn't fill it up in the lane. But yeah, nine meter header in that. And we're chaffing it up. And yeah, that is going to fill up very quickly, so this will require multiple trips, so, which again makes sense. I chose to go with this option rather than like the trans, just because of the issues. I know that's going to represent us when it comes to harvesting that. But 
gap, student is needed at most an hour, solid work. And I think from the size we can get out of this, this will cover at least half the cost of the field. Come peak cell type. So yeah, actually I think this was a worthy investment. But that's what it is, it's all about investment. We've taken the risk of the loan. We make good payments for the loan, hence why the bank allowed us to have that additional loan. So otherwise it wouldn't have lent us money if they didn't think it was going to be made for payments. We gave them our business plan of what we're planning to do with that extra 200 grand. Yep, and they're happy with it, so... Okay, that's going to be the problem as well as keeping on that for not spitting out. But yeah, that was just from... One. Yeah, that's from one pass, that is. I'm thinking, yeah, up and down. That's going to be. I think we're going to get close to half a million litres, I think. I think yeah, about 400,000 litres, about 350, 400,000 litres. Yeah, 350, 400, so. That I am absolutely chuffed with. But yeah, let's go. Yeah, I've got some contracts to do, so let's change tack for the last t five, ten minutes of the episode. Of just, yeah, do some simple stuff, some humble contract work, I think. So, let's go to your contracts. Got a Philbin contract on 86. We've got same contracts on 93 and 72. Bit of a distance apart. Also, we've got a sorghum contract at Long Meadow Stores. So, Long Meadow Stores is up there on the right. So, yeah, 50 is actually right. My little path and track. So, actually, it's not too bad. So, yeah, let's do a little time lapse of getting some of these contracts done. I'll include screenshots of anything we do off camera as a result. But, yeah, let's get these contracts done. And I'll see you folks in about two or three minutes time.
being very busy. And yeah, we're into September 2. Left times at times 1 for now as we're just getting everything done. And yeah, we just got a last little bit of sunflower here from some sunflower contracts we've been doing. So yeah, done uh, yeah, a couple of sunflower contracts. So yeah, let's go to the BGA and sell some of the sunflower, not all of it, because most of this I think is going to be for ourselves, or at least a significant part of it is. There we go. And ooh, interesting development here, I think. It's not like, who owns this bank or dealership, whoever. Still a bit of a revampification of the BGA. Fair enough. But yeah, so he's back onto the task at hand. So yeah, we've got... There we go, just set that to tip sides right. 21% transported. How much is this are we going to have left over? Actually, you know what? I think what we'll do is, if we set it to the green door, 76%. Oh, this should not have much left at all. 94%. There we go. So that's 2,000. Yeah, 2,332. Is it even actually worth it putting it into production to get some sunflower oil? Because that is a 2 to 1 ratio. So this will have not much. So, you know what, heck it, we'll just put the rest in. I was hoping to have more, but. Oh well, that's, that's still, what, 10 grand or so we got there? So, yeah, not too bad overall. But yeah, we have done plenty of contracts. And that means we're up to. Wait, Oh, say 2900 no, 290,000 pounds. And yeah, that is a good sum of money. You just have to pay off the loan. But I am not going to do that just yet. Because there are some things I want to do, so I think to set things up for the next episode. I want to change what we're doing with the forager and that. So I'll do stuff like there. Uh, since that's how we've met each other, I've installed some more mods, and yeah, I'm thinking again a tr some form of like you know trayer system and that. So yeah, this one here. How much is that tip of body extension? Only forty-one thousand a year, so. Really, we're looking at the X52 tipper, so go with the extension, that's going to be 108,000 litres or so. I think that's what we'll do, because we could tip it back. So what we can do is have this hooked up to like a lorry system, so... Because yeah, that's going to cost us a fair bit. But if I speak to the dealership, maybe we can get a good deal. I don't know, maybe a Volvo or something. Yeah. Something like this or so. So yeah, prepare me a sec. I'm going to speak to the dealer and see what we can come up with. In terms of leasing out a semi for a few hours. Like, we're looking at for what, about four hours or so? But most likely it's going to be a either a four day or a half day's rent charge, so let's see what that co gonna cost us. And there we go, some time later, and after a bit of negotiation, we've managed to lease this Volvo here. Only downside it is a, we obviously it's an import model, so obviously we're in left hand drive, and we're in a country where it is driving on the left hand side, so yeah, not sure on that, but we've got six grand. Obviously, that costs us. And yeah, I was meant to go back there. 
Right, yes, we've got this, got the trailer, and we've got a dolly hitch. Oh no, this ain't gonna go well. Let's go just to find little ways to do the UV here. Uh, do a UV here, perhaps? No, it won't work. Okay, we don't have access to that. Oh, bear with me a sec. Oh, so I go and. I should want to turn it down here by the green mill, so yeah. This costs us six grand, and that's basically. Unfortunately, they didn't do a half day rate for their lorry fleet, so. Fair enough. That costs us six grand, that's for. Uh, for the week and that, so. Or for the rest of the, for the next 24 hours, so. Actually, how much flour have we got at the moment? We've got some check in. 56,000 litres, so. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. But yeah, so we've got this, and the plan here is hooking this up to the forage harvester by the dolly. And then when it comes ready to empty, my thinking is gets hooked up, take it to the farm. Yeah, it's a quite of a narrow base lorry. But we don't need a long lorry, and the fairness with our the tight lanes we're working around here. Really, I think that's nothing we should be reconsider is a lorry system. Because, yeah, we've got all these trailers and that, yeah, it's all good. But I think it's letting us down, it is, like, able to transport mass amounts of rain. And, like, these has got the agricultural tires, got tracks on. With this option at least. So yeah, not yeah, I think it's definitely time we consider getting a lorry. Maybe more of a budgeted friendly one, so uh yeah, maybe I don't know. Oof. That's got a lot of torque to it, as just sort of bolts off. But we do have like seven hundred and 750 horsepower, I think. So, yeah, this ain't no slouch. So, that's disconnected. Do we have a hitch option on this? I don't think so. But if we do, not the right time, so. Alright. I'll park that over here. We'll leave that over there. Actually, what's the hitch type on the back? Yes, that should work out well for us. Oh, I didn't realise we could actually raise and lower ourselves. Down we go, up we go, down we go, up we go. Yeah, I did not realise we could do that. And, oh, yeah, the tree's almost in the right colour, but it's got to be more of a lightish dark blue. That's the best way to describe it, apart from looking at the actual colour code described in the game, but... So yeah, in theory, this should work. There we go. Okay, the car doesn't affect the general use of that, so... But yeah, I just want to give it a little quick test here. See how this would perform, so... Who could do a quick headland and that finishes off? So there we go. Just, yeah, we are chaffing away. And we are filling up this trailer. So yeah, rather than have to make multiple trips, we can just do one trip. And that's it. So yeah, actually, well, let's end the episode here with doing a little bit of time lapse. Ain't gonna take us too long. Then, yeah, we will go and put this one inside because I'm
Looks so, alright, we're about halfway done with that side. We're gonna fall, take a bit, bit of a breather, take a little stop. And yeah, we need to get this compacted and yeah, we're only 30% compacted and I don't think we're gonna be able to get all of the chaff in here. That is a concern for me. We do have some options, but things like I wonder can we build can we build chaff? That I do not know. Because if we can build a chaff, then that's perfect for us. Because then all we have to do is just yeah, bait it. And that's fine, because that's what we're gonna be doing with our grass snap for when we do our signage from our own grass. It's literally just yeah, bait it. Yeah, at the moment, just try to compact it with the fence. This weighs like 60 tons. I've got an additional six tons of weight. Gee, I was going to get there very slowly, but yeah, I'm just taking the time. As two apologies about the camera work. Oh, that's, that's one of the mods I missed from FS90 is the disabled vehicle camera collision. Was that by? I don't think that was by DD Mod Passion, Mantrid perhaps, or it could be just someone else. But yeah, I swear. So, yeah, we had that, that disabled camera collision on FS19. And yeah, that's one mod we can really do with on FS22. There we go. But yeah, this is going to take a bit of time to compact. And yeah, we'll do the rest of the work in the next episode. But yeah, I thought we'll just take a little stop, take a little reverb. The episode's going to be long enough already. Man, yes, it took me three days to get this episode done and recorded just because of real life stuff. And I'm going to be spending today, Friday, yeah, doing a lot of videos, batch recording for the weekend because I'm going to be away this weekend. So that's going to be fun. But yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, that's where we'll leave it today. As always, hope you enjoy the episode. If so, smash that button. Feel free to down below. If you want to share us, then please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider. But, for as you to do, hope you have a nice day. But for now, it's be far more Extreme, and I'll see you all very soon.